how we test for ink. All right, so we're into part two. You can check that off your list and not leave yet, but. All right, first of all, we do speech and noise testing. We're gonna do 25 words in the right ear in quiet, 25 words in the left ear in quiet. Then, and that's at a comfortable level. Kiddos should be around upper 80s to 100% correct, right? Then we add just a little bit of background noise. It's not even that much. If the level is 50 that we're presenting at, 50 dB HL, we may put 45 dB HL of noise in. So there's still a pretty good chance that the kiddo is going to be able to hear what the, what the man is saying. All right? So that's just going in the right ear. Usually around the 70 to 80 percent mark is where we would expect to see it. I see scores as low as 32. Um, just on one ear, and these are really typical words. I mean, we're not we're not using anything obnoxious. So, I mean, that can really show a lot of difficulties there. Um, then we do 25 words in the left ear. That's regular and quiet, and then adding just a little bit of noise. Then we do the staggered spontaneous word test. This one is awesome. It is a very sensitive test of auditory processing abilities. And I care more about sensitivity than specificity when it comes to auditory processing testing because I want to make sure that I'm getting every kiddo that is having these difficulties. I don't want anybody to slip through the cracks. It would be better for me to um, get more information that I need than little. Um, a lot of these kiddos have gone to seven or eight professionals by the time they're seeing me, and they need some way to be able to change what is going on or the way that they're using, utilizing this input. So the staggered spontaneous word test is crazy because you'll hear two words in one ear, two words in the other ear. Crazy thing is the second and third word are presented at the exact same time. So I might hear, and it's cool that audiology uses red and blue as our typical colors, I've never used a rock chalk example, but I came up with that today. I was pretty thrilled with myself. <laughs> so, all right, so right ear, rock chalk, left ear, Jayhawk. But chalk and Jay, right at the same time. And then the kiddo has to repeat all four words back. I'm sorry, you're probably really not looking forward to this, are you? No, <laughs> sorry. All right, then the phonemic synthesis test is the last test that we do. And we divide the word up sound, a, a word up sound by sound, and then the kid has to bring it all together into one word. For example, mm, e, me, right? Or sh, ooh, shoe, and so on and so forth. Believe it or not, this can be extremely difficult for people who have auditory processing difficulties, especially as we get more and more sounds going on. Now, if somebody has a decoding issue, they may have said, uh, I'm pretty sure that was me, you know, for that first one. Um, and, and so decoding is telling us, oh, okay, they're confusing a couple sounds for each other, possibly. Um, but if it's more of a tolerance fading memory issue, where they're having some short-term memory difficulties, we might just have them say, E? Because they're not remembering the first sound. So decoding, it, another way to kind of look at how all these characteristics go together is if you and I were to go walking down the street and we passed five trees, and I said, okay, tell me what every single one of those trees were. Now, first of all, if you weren't able to identify what a tree was by its leaf and to know what that was, that would be impossible, right? So I might say, oh, you have a short-term memory issue if you can't remember. Or maybe it's more of a decoding issue because she wouldn't have been able to tell anyway. Now, if, it, if she really did know what the leaves were, if we studied each leaf together, and then I said, okay, what, what were all those trees? And she said, oh, I remember the first three, or I remember the last three, but not the first two. Then maybe that's a short-term memory issue, depending on how many trees we actually see people normally remember when they know. Now, if she would say them back,
map to me, but in improper sequence. Oh, there we go. Then that's an organization issue. Um, integration. This one's a little bit harder to put into that same context. Maybe you would say, what trees? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so diagnostics. There have been some silly things going on in my field. Some really interesting discussions, but some of them are really silly about, maybe we should put a percentage on the number of diagnoses we give in each specific clinic. So maybe this clinic, you're only allowed to give a diagnosis to 67%, that's the number they've been using, 67% of the population uses. I live in Kansas. These people are curing their health disorder. They have no idea what's going on. How are they supposed to know and how are they supposed to send the kids to me? But by the time the kid does get to me, they're a dead ringer. Um, so, <laughs> so it's a little bit higher in my clinic. Every now and then I'll say, wow, I don't see any issues here whatsoever. And I get to send the kid along their happy little way. And they are happy. They get away from me. I'm just kidding. Um, but, but most of the time when I'm going to see a kid, it's for a reason. So uh, lots of people will say, oh, but the research isn't saying this or that. Well, parents don't have the luxury to wait around for all the research to prove or disprove, which there is a lot of research to prove this stuff, don't get me wrong, but there are still those doubters out there who have pretty loud voices. It's much easier to yell no instead of having a nice long drawn out yes. 